Revelation is a strange book and a difficult book at times. It introduces us to, frankly, weird creatures. Those four heavenly creatures with their eyes inside and outside. Can you imagine eyes that look inside as well as outside? Science, in a sense, has, has shown us that the, the world is a lot weirder and stranger and more wondrous than we imagined or could possibly imagine. You see a uh, magnification of the little creatures I, I love the, I've come to know the tardigrade. Have you come across the, this micro creature that can survive nuclear warfare? So, yeah, the human race has its problems. Will we destroy ourselves? Quite possibly, if we aren't careful. But I think the tardigrade will survive us. But these four heavenly creatures have fascinated people and Christians down the centuries. Each of the four is different. One is like a, a lion, one like an ox, one like an eagle, one like a human being. Someone says the four creatures represent the sort of very heights of, of creation, of creatures in our world, lion with all its majesty, the ox with all its strength, the eagle with its flight, and human beings, yes, with all their knowledge and potential. And Christians down the centuries have linked them to the four gospel writers, so that Mark is the, the symbol for Mark is the, the lion roaring his message. The symbol for Matthew is, is the, the human being, the humanity of the Beatitudes. The, the ox is Luke, the strength of Luke, carrying on into Acts, that sort of continual story. And the eagle, the great flight of John's Gospel. These four creatures are worshipping with us this morning. It's a picture, and John uses numbers. The number four. I'm not quite sure the significance in Jewish pneumology of four, but we have the four gospel writers. We have the four heavenly creatures. We have the seven candles, or the seven lights, the seven spirits or the spirit in seven guises, the seven, sevenfold gifts that have been part of the Catholic tradition. Seven is one of the great numbers, one of the sacred numbers of the Bible. Because seven, of course, the seven days of a week, the seven days of creation. And six is for John a bad number because it's, it's not seven. <laughs> you get to seven, your week is complete. You have your, the day that God rested. That day was just as important as the six days that God created. However we, you know, this is not human time, this is God time. But the resting of God is just as important as the activity of God. We need them both. And in human life, we need them both too. And if we miss out one, if, we, if it's all 24-7, then we destroy ourselves. And so six is, uh, for John, a, a symbol of incompleteness. Incompleteness. And then he lines them up, six, 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 and that becomes a bad number. Of course, cranks and, and uh, all kinds of extremists have, have used that number in, and, and looked for that number wherever they can. It's 
part of the humour of the, the hymn book writers that one of the, the hymns that most reflects the book of Revelation has the number 666. We're not superstitious, are we? You'll, um, you wouldn't mind living at number 13, would you? We're going to sing 666 right at the end. Sing we the song of those who stand around the eternal throne. Of every kindred, clime and land, a multitude unknown. Some little joke on behalf of the compilers of Rejoice and Sing. Seven. And then the final number to share this morning is, is the number 12. 12 was such, again, such an important number for the Jewish Hebrew tradition, the 12 tribes of Israel. And that's taken up by Jesus with appointing 12 apostles. John doubles it for heaven because for him, heaven includes both Jews and Gentiles both Israel and all nations. And so 12 elders represent Israel and it's the whole history of the people of Israel, the Old Testament. And 12 elders represent the new, the new Jerusalem, the new people who've been added to that number, the Gentile nation believers. Numbers. Fascinating but something not to get hung up with. Those Christians who down the centuries have got caught up with the book of Revelation and tried to predict, ah, the end of the world is, okay, 20, 2014. There were a number of American preachers who, who gave a particular date and it came and it went and they said, oh, sorry, no, actually I meant... Ten years on from that. Now, it was just a slight miscommunication with the Lord. And they predicted one more. This is the date. We're not into that. Jesus told us not to concern ourselves with dates and times. That is in God's hands. But these sacred numbers can point us to something of the reality of God. And the heavenly worship that continues forevermore.